Sun's Hope sculpture commissioned four years ago will be seen as symbol of her life and her legacy. Prince William and Prince Harry walked into the newly redesigned sunken garden at Kensington Palace shoulder to shoulder on Thursday, both relaxed and smiling, as the cameras clicked. Many royal watchers likely breathed a sigh of relief at the outward show of unity. There has been increased tension between the brothers since Harry and his wife, Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, withdrew from royal duties and moved to California last year, and more particularly, since an explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey in March, in which the couple accused the royal family of racism and indifference. But at Thursday's low-key ceremony to unveil a long-awaited statue of their late mother, Diana, Princess of Wales, on what would have been her 60th birthday, the brothers kept it civil. We all thought Harry and William would present a united front, said Roy Nikar, royal editor at the Sunday Times. There were plenty of smiles as they were arriving together, walking in, she said. And I think the images from that will be quite powerful in trying to overturn the public image of the brothers, which has been divided for so long. But Nikar said one brief, cordial public appearance doesn't mean everything is rosy between the two. That's a far cry from when they commissioned the bronze statue four years ago, on the 20th anniversary of Diana's death, to celebrate her legacy. Back then, they were in lockstep, they were as close as two brothers can be, Nikar said. No longer. William and Harry reportedly barely speak to each other these days. But Thursday was about their mother, and the princes kept the spotlight squarely on Diana, and the effigy in her memory. The statue which has received mixed reviews in the media, depicts Diana surrounded by three children, meant to represent the impact of her humanitarian work. The unveiling in the palace's gardens was the first time William and Harry had been seen together since the funeral of their grandfather, Prince Philip, in April. They didn't make any speeches, but the brothers released a joint statement, saying they were spending the day remembering their mother's love, strength and character, qualities that made her a force for good around the world changing countless lives for the better. Every day, we wish she was still with us, and our hope is that this statue will be seen forever as a symbol of her life and her legacy, they said. Sculptor Ian Rank broadly said. For all that the princess was a very public figure and, in many respects, an icon, she was somebody's mother, said Rank broadly, and that's why he paid the greatest heed to both princes and what they had to say in creating the depiction, hoping it might give them some sort of comfort or solace. Rank broadly also remarked one certainly got the feeling that she had an enormous sense of fun. That sense of fun is also what Graham Dillamore recalls. The deputy head of gardens for historic royal palaces used to be the head gardener at Kensington Palace in the late 1980s, when Diana and Prince Charles were living there with their two young boys. He's also one of five gardeners who spent hours planting thousands of Diana's favorite flowers to bring the redesigned sunken garden to life. Dillamore stood in the garden Thursday and described how, decades ago, Diana would often jog past the gardeners and stop to chat and share a joke, even in the early hours of the morning. You could just hear the birds chirping in the background and the princess would come skipping down those steps behind me, he said. Singing some ABBA song which I couldn't stand, he said with a laugh. Dillamore said he was honored to work on the garden's new look and hoped Diana would have liked it, with her statue at the forefront. Steps from the garden in Kensington Palace's Orangery, is an exhibition that also focuses on Diana's legacy of warmth. Royal style in the making features gowns and outfits worn by the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret, but the exhibition's centerpiece is Diana's wedding dress, on loan from her sons. The iconic dress, with its taffeta ruffles, puffed sleeves and 7.6-meter train, is imprinted on many minds, even 40 years after the wedding that was broadcast live and watched by millions around the world. But it's a sketch of another dress that the curator points to when asked about Diana's legacy through fashion. Designed by David Sassoon, it's royal blue with bright pink and yellow flowers. She called it her caring dress. It was her favorite dress, said the exhibition's curator, Matthew Storey. She wore it time and time again, so much so that the press told her to stop wearing it. She wasn't going to have any of that because she knew that children responded to those bright colors, 